practice and I'm back on site again today in exactly the same place as I was working in before. If you look behind you to your left over here, you can see the board that I was working on just the other day. This is the one I was bending into place. I got this in place, the corresponding one on top, and then the two on the other end that match it. I uh, got them all into place and once they were in place, I started putting putty in all the nail holes. I even puttied all the nail holes like on the walls and everywhere, but in some of these places where I feel like it jump right out at you, I like to uh, get some putty into there. Uh, so I did all the putty and then I kind of prepped things and got them ready to start sanding and that's what I'm doing today. I'm starting on this wall, doing the columns and the ceiling joists and I'm just going to move straight across the structure. Now Josh did a lot of sanding uh, and putty work ahead of me and he did a he, did a lot of work, you got a lot done, but there's still that last 10% that I really got to do myself. I'm still finding uh, staples here and there that were stuck into the wood and, you know, just kind of going over it and getting it, uh, you know, ultimately smoothed out. One thing I wanted to talk about today, in addition to the actual carpentry work, is you can see I'm, I got my N95 mask on because there's a lot of dust with the sanding. Uh, some of it's wood dust, some of it is wood putty dust, and neither of those you really want to have in your, inside of your lungs. So I've been wearing this and, uh, it reminded me that it's not, you know, people, you know, with the, uh, the pandemic going across the, uh, the world at the moment, uh, you know, everyone's trying to get N95 masks, and I think people uh, think, you know, it's like, I'm just going to buy my way out of it, you know, I'll just buy this and then I'll be done. Um, but you know, it really is important not only to, you know, have uh, tools and assets, but to know what to do with them and to be comfortable working with them. Working in a mask is not the same as working without a mask, uh, you know, even well, this is a reused mask. I had this one for several years, and I keep washing it and uh, you know vacuuming it. Uh, so it's not as good as it was when it was fresh. But even with a fresh mask, you know you're limiting the amount of air that's getting into your lungs, and especially if you're exerting yourself, working hard, you know that can take a toll on the way that you feel. And uh, it's important to think about that ahead of going into an emergency situation. I know uh, equally with firearms, people think you know. Uh, you know, I, I bought myself a pistol, so if a war broke out, you know, I've never practiced with it, I've never done anything with it, but if there was a war right here, I'd be totally fine because I've got a pistol. Or like they've got a hunting rifle and it's like, you know, if the grocery store is ever shut down, I, I've got a hunting rifle so my family could eat because you know the way hunting rifles work is you, you point them at your kitchen table and pull the trigger and then food pops right out of the gun. Uh, it's really important not only to have the tools, but also to be familiar with how to use them and to know uh, the limitations. Because working through this, you know, I, I feel like I run out of breath more frequently than I certainly would if I didn't have any mask at all. Again, this is one that I've cleaned a few times. It's not anywhere near as good as it was when it was first, the, you know, a brand new mask. But still, like I said, even with brand new masks, you got to learn how to use them, get comfortable with how to use them. And that way, when you need to use them, you don't have that learning curve happening during an emergency. That's it. I've just got a bunch of sanding for myself to do today. Thanks for watching.